The biggest threat to humanity is a grid down scenario. And many people don't even think about it, give it the light of day, or have even considered it. Yet the fact that this looming threat is not a question of if, but a question of when, should give many people pause. Now, America's power grid is aging, and Congress has known it for years. Reams of federal agency reports have been presented that confirm that if a man-made attack, a cyber war, or terrorist, even a solar event or weather took down the electrical grid, thousands or even millions of Americans will die. And this could be catastrophic for the world as well because, well, the grids are connected. Here's just one of the dozens of recent reports on how fragile the grid is on planet Earth. Now, a long-term grid collapse will precipitate all other disasters you can think of. Starvation, freezing, lack of water, sanitation-related illnesses, medical issues, lack of medicines, and the obvious civil unrest. And it, it doesn't honestly matter how the grid goes down. And it's, we've already established it's not a matter of if the grid will go down, it's a matter of when. Now, terrorists have already tried more times than we've heard about. But if you already have a preparedness mindset and are diligently prepping, you're going to fare better than the average person. And that's a good thing. Because if you're going to prepare for one disaster, a medium to long-term power outage is the one you want to prep for. You see, America's power grid is woefully inadequate, outdated, and ill-prepared for an attack or even a natural disaster. Whether it comes in the form of EMP from North Korea, Russia, or Chinese hackers, or any other source, the power grid isn't something that you can rely on on a daily basis. What you need to know is how to survive a power grid attack, or at least prepare yourself for a power outage, at the very least. And tonight's podcast, we're going to cover all the major threats and what you can do to protect yourself and your family. Now, there are four things that will increase the chances of power grid failure. And the most imminent is EMP. Nuclear weapons can arguably do a lot more damage when detonated in low orbit than actually being dropped on a city. Basically, if a nuclear weapon got detonated at a high enough altitude in low orbit that would interact with our atmosphere, including the ionosphere, the teeming sea of electrons that makes most satellite communication possible would be, well, quite affected. And the end result would be a shower of electricity on Earth, which is something we've never seen, but it has been modeled. And based on the modeling, it could take out the power grid for half of the country. Or it could be more localized, but it would cause massive destruction and it would be a huge shock. The grid would be out for years. And so we have that current threat looming at this time. And then we have solar flares. We're long overdue for a Carrington event. The last time it happened was 1859. And large X-class solar flares hit Earth approximately every 150 years. So we're decades overdue for a large solar flare. Now these flares could take out a huge chunk of the power grid. It's pretty much the same as an EMP only provided by the sun. And this natural phenomenon cannot be controlled by mankind. If the sun decides to send off a huge solar flare directly at us, there is nothing we can do to prepare for it, except be prepared. 
not scared. And this has happened before. Back in 1989, a solar flare knocked out the power for millions of Canadians for nine hours. Some scientists have speculated that it's a when-not-if situation that's more likely than an EMP attack. So, solar flare is more likely than an EMP attack, according to some. Well, and more specifically, a large enough solar flare that could take out the grid. And now, the easiest way that the grid can be compromised, cyber attacks. This is the main potential cause of a massive power outage that the government has been planning for. Even Congress has reason to believe that malicious hackers, either in the employ of terrorist groups or perhaps foreign state actors, are looking into ways to disable the American power grid and take us over. China would be the number one person we'd be looking at, or country. Now, even low-level cyber vandalism could knock out the power where you live for weeks, maybe even months. While the power being on in the rest of the country would make things easier for you and your family, you would still need to prepare even for a brief localized outage. In a worst-case scenario, the same hackers can cause localized disasters around a power plant using machinery. So there are lots of scenarios. But the biggest threat, in my opinion, as a geologist, is infrastructure failure. Now, this could just come from failing infrastructure and the grid failing all by its own. But the most dangerous thing is natural disasters. Because these grids are tied together. So a major natural disaster, let's say continent scale, like a Cascadia superthrust mega tsunami, could take out enough of the grid to cause the entire world to go into darkness for years. The American power grid is old and poorly maintained, which means it doesn't take an EMP, a solar flare, or cyber attack from an international crime syndicate to take it down. In fact, an electrical grid failure in one part of the country could quickly spread to another due to the grid's interconnectivity. With half of the country on one grid and the other half on another, and Texas on its own, the entire grid could go down like a house of cards. Now, as you can see, there are a number of threats to the power grid. Most are out of our control. Some of them are man-made. Some are natural. And others are just due to the human failure or the effects and the ravages of time. Any way you slice it, the power grid is going down. And that's a fact, Jack. In whole or in part, isn't really an idle concern. It's something that could happen at any second. And if you care about your life and your family, you need to prepare for them. Here are some of the essentials you want to make sure you have with you in the event of a long-term power outage. And we're also going to share with you a 57-page expose in a PDF to get you started. Now water, it's the biggest thing you're gonna need to worry about in the event of a power outage. The water supply is gonna dry up. Now unless you have a water well, you're probably on a water system that needs electricity to operate, city water. A power outage at the water treatment plant or processing plant means that you will lose access to the most basic necessity of life, water. This means you need to start storing your own water, as well as planning for the contingency that the water supply as you know it will never come back. That means you need an unlimited supply of water. So that's a big one. Now, you're going to need one gallon of water per person, per day. This is the absolute minimum when it comes to storing water for survival. That includes one gallon per day for your pets as well. And this is the water you're going to need just for drinking, but also for cooking, bathing, and cleaning your clothes and food instruments. You go through a lot more water in a typical day than you probably think. So storing a lot of water is key to surviving even a moderate power outage. 
Coming up with your own water supply is ideal, as you'll find that water stores take up a lot of space very quickly in a small, let's say, apartment or house. If you live near a water supply, like a river or stream, that's great. Just know that you're going to have to boil or filter the water to ensure that it's totally safe for drinking. And that is something you'll have to know about the water in your area that's specific. So you might need advanced water filtration just to survive. Beyond that, if you want to be extra prepared, look into digging a well to get your home onto well water or just have a backup well on your property that no one knows about. If that's possible, you will have virtually endless supply of water. That's good news, especially in a grid down scenario. Now, the second thing you're going to need is food. And food is second for a reason. You'll die much faster from dehydration than you will from starvation. What's more, people in dire straits with food have often come up with rather creative solutions about how they can feed themselves in a disaster. All of a sudden, that can of water chestnuts you've had in your cupboard for months is starting to look pretty delicious. Now, all kidding aside, preparing for a food shortage or an interruption in the food supply chain, which is going to happen, especially if there's no power, is something you should be preparing for. There are a number of ways this might happen, but if the power grid gets knocked out, you can bet your bottom dollar that the food isn't going to be coming for a while, and you're not going to be able to shop in any stores. Stocks on the shelves will immediately be looted or bought up. And this happens the moment word spreads about the grid down scenario. And what's more, are you even going to have cash on hand to pay for the food? Many people use their debit card. Are you, do you have hundreds of dollars to buy stuff if they start using pens and papers again? So there are lots of considerations. Now, the most important, anytime meat or dairy goes above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for more than two hours, it's unsafe to eat. So maybe a digital thermometer might be convenient. But keep in mind that a nuclear EMP will drain every battery in addition to knocking out the power grid. So have an old-fashioned analog version thermometer on hand just in case. Well, and we're going to need backup generators to power refrigerators as you switch over to a non-refrigerated lifestyle. Now, freezers are great because the food will stay good for two days in the freezer, and you can use that time to start cooking food, drying it in advance, and, and preparing it for survival for the coming week. Cooked food will eventually go bad, but it isn't going to have a much longer shelf life than the uncooked food getting warm in the freezer. So cook your food before you lose it. And store food. Look at this prepper, gorgeous basement. Canned food can store for decades. 30 years you can eat it. So 10 cans are a must. Rice and beans. And storage containers to store maybe wild food, wild harvest, things you can grow. And you might also store things you could trade and barter. These are all the basics of prepping. Now, when the grid goes down and the civil unrest happens, you might want to listen in to see what's going on. So you're going to need some communication. But before you can use the communication, when it gets dark, you're going to be scared. So you're going to need light. And people often don't think of this. While not quite as pressing to your survival as food and water, not having light can kill you. It can actually cause injury or even death if you're walking around without the ability to see. And in a survival situation, something as seemingly mundane as a broken toe can mean all the difference between life and death, especially when there's no hospitals or doctors. So some sort of light is a must. Flashlights, batteries, candles, fire starters, lighters, light. You can even buy self-contained solar lighting systems on the internet that may just save your arse. 
So consider light. Now, as we just stated, you can stockpile batteries for your flashlights, but if there's an EMP attack, those batteries are going to be useless. This is also true of LED headlamps and other sources of electric light. So get a Faraday cage and stockpile and secure some lighting and batteries for use after the event. And if you do that, then you can count on them to actually work. And while the Red Cross warns preppers and humans against using candles, keep some on hand. Just be sure to keep them in the proper holders. And not putting your candles near anything flammable and certainly not leaving the candles lit while you're sleeping. Be smart, people. And let's talk about the communication now. Can we, we eavesdrop in on military and government? Yes, you just need the proper equipment. Communication during a power outage is important. You need to be able to collect your family members who aren't anywhere near you, perhaps. And at the same time, you want to communicate with your family members on the other side of the country, perhaps, or even on the other side of the world. There's just one problem. In the event of a massive attack like an EMP, you're not really going to have any options for communication. Even your diesel power generator probably won't work because the circuit board on every electrical device you own will be fried. Here's what you need to know, though. The FCC requires that all cell phone towers have a four-hour battery backup. And that means that you're not going to withstand a prolonged outage due to hackers. In the event of an EMP, the battery is going to be drained right away, in theory. An EMP would affect the landlines, but it would affect the relaying centers used to connect cell phone calls as well. And what's more, your ham radio isn't, also isn't going to work. However, under virtually every other grid down scenario, including the power grid getting knocked out by hackers, your electronic devices will continue to function properly, provided that you have alternative power sources. Beyond that, your cell phone is going to work for at least four hours after the power grid goes down. Use your time wisely when communication gets knocked out for survival purposes only. Stop playing solitaire. The most dangerous threat is dumb people and carbon monoxide. You might have carbon monoxide detectors all around your house, but chances are you've never taken the subject very seriously. You worry about other unlikely disasters like house fires and burglars. But if there's a power outage, people do dumb things because they're dumb. They have no experience. Not only are you going to have no carbon monoxide detectors to let you know about a leak, you're also going to be living in a world where a leak is far more likely. Let's talk common sense. Unless it's a fireplace, it's not a good place for starting a fire, especially indoors. All indoor fires should be in a fireplace. And all open fire cooking should be done outside. If you're using a generator, don't use that in any enclosed space, including your garage. Because this can easily leak in the house and kill your family. Common sense and being aware that you don't have any carbon monoxide detectors are basically all that you can do, do to prevent carbon dioxide and monoxide poisoning when the power goes out. So then we have to worry about weather. Most people have normalized themselves, especially the people that live in places like southern Arizona. If the grid goes down in the summer, all those old people are going to die and it is going to smell horrible. The summer offers unique challenges for those without power. For example, the news doesn't put out up the extreme heat warnings for little kids, the elderly and pets, because they like to hear themselves talk. They do it because extreme heat can be dangerous. And you can see here from the graph on weather fatalities, heat is a big killer. So worry about the weather. So it, we need to stay cool and hydrated and stay smart. So stay in the shade. 
A lot of people just don't know these common sense things. An increased need for hydration means that your water supply is going to go faster, so you're going to need even more of it. In hot conditions where, hype, where uh, heat stroke is a possibility, you're going to want to drink at least a gallon of water every day, which is basically your entire allotted supply of water for the day. You should also do your best to stay cool by opening windows or even get out of the house and stay under a tree or a bush in a shady area. Wear lighter colored clothing. And work only during cooler hours in a grid down scenario, like nighttime. And then you got the cold showers because there's no hot water heater. This can be a great way to stay cool if the water supply is still working. Or you could just take a bucket of water outside, keep it in the shade, and splash it on yourselves. Heat strokes can kill. The signs are simple. Nausea, weakness, dizziness, confusion, and hot or dry skin. Remember that if you're alcoholic or you drink caffeinated drinks, this will dehydrate you faster. So you need to avoid drinking alcohol and caffeine on hot days. Unless you have unlimited water. And then there's the winter. The exact opposite is going to happen in the winter. How are you going to stay warm? Do you have a fireplace? You're going to need extra clothing if you live in a cold region. It's pretty simple. Hypothermia is no joke. Numbness in the extremities, stumbling, excessive shivering, slow heart rate, lethargy, confusion, delirium, and then death. We hate to bring this information to you, but this is about surviving and thriving. And you need to be prepared because if you're not, it's not going to happen that way. You should be taking measures also to protect yourself and your family from the final and most nasty element in a grid down scenario, the human element. The most dangerous animal on earth is man. And those who have failed to prepare are certainly going to be coming after those who already are ready for survival. This is the zombie apocalypse. Having thousands of rounds of ammunition on hand can mean the difference between you and your family surviving, even in the event of a temporary power outage like a few months. So stock up. The best weapon for a prepper home defense is a rifle. And the ammo is cheap. So stock up and learn how to use the weapon. From handguns to shotguns to rifles, the best scenario is to get different types, including ammunition, to train with when you're sitting around without electricity. One of the good things about ammunition is that even in an EMP, it does not impact your ability to shoot. Not only will it provide you and your family with defense against bandits, marauders, and other idiots, but it's also give you something to do while you wait for the power to come back on. You become a better shooter. People can hear you shooting and they'll come nowhere near you. And a bonus, if an animal walks by, it will help put food on the table. The main thing is that you know how to survive if the power grid goes down. And that's why we're doing this video. The more people who keep food and water on hand and weapons, the more likely it is that our society could remain intact, even in the event of a long-term power outage or any sort of disruptive event. So please, if you have dumb neighbors, educate your neighbors on this matter to ensure that your family and your community are able to weather the storm. Because telling your neighbor that you're going to have all the supplies and weapons, and if he doesn't, you're going to shoot them and eat them, could be a motivating talk. Now, couldn't it? We all want to be prepared, not scared, so go get it. And here is the 57-page Prepper's Grid Down Survival Guide, how to prepare if the lights go out and the gas, water, or electricity. And it will be linked below for free because we love you. And one additional preparedness 
tool that you can bring into your prepper basement is the Jace Medical Case. Now, we have an affiliate program with Jace. And if you simply use their doctors and fill out the questionnaire, you can get five, six of the most powerful antibiotics to help against any ailment during a grid down scenario when doctors won't be around. Some of the antibiotics here prevent from like anthrax and terrorists, as well as broken bones and flesh eating bacteria. All of the bigs, all of the best antibiotics are in this kit and it may just save your life. So check out the link below for the Jace medical case, support the channel and support your family in a time of need. And that's a boom to knowledge. I hope you got something out of the video. Leave your questions below. Maybe we didn't answer everything we should have. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Grab a Jace case for your peace of mind and security for your family in case you can't get to the doctor and someone does have an infection. Can you imagine in a grid down scenario, you don't make it because you're tooth abscessed? It's that simple. Be prepared, not scared. We love you. Thanks for listening. Mm.